the American taxpayer rescued General Motors from bankruptcy and ruin. Eighty billion tax dollars saved GM and Chrysler from going under. Did we bail out GM so it could become a Chinese company? The evidence is mounting that General Motors is becoming China Motors. General Motors has been shrinking its U.S. operations while it's aggressively expanding and investing in the People's Republic of China. This is Dan Ackerson, the current CEO of General Motors, addressing reporters in Shanghai, China in February of 2011. He was remarkably candid about the path GM has chosen after the taxpayer rescue, but few Americans know what he said. We'd better pay attention. Almost seven out of every ten automobiles, seven out of ten of our vehicles, were made outside the United States. Let's think about what he just said. Since the taxpayer bailout, 70% of the cars and trucks produced by General Motors have been built someplace outside the United States. More and more, that someplace is the People's Republic of China. We have 11 joint ventures in China with SAIC and FAW. We're involved in vehicle manufacturing, sales, distribution, engineering, design, downstream businesses such as telematics, financing, and used cars. We operate 11 assembly plants in China, four powertrain plants in eight cities across the country. We have more than 2,700 dealerships and sales outlets nationwide. Let's go back and listen to the very first thing he said in that soundbite. We have 11 joint ventures in China with SAIC and FAW. China's SAIC is the Shanghai Automotive Industry Corporation. It is run by the Communist Government of China, which owns or controls most manufacturing activity, including the auto industry. FAW is another Chinese government-owned manufacturer. What this means is General Motors, the corporation saved by the government of America's democracy, has 11 joint ventures with the autocratic, anti-democracy, communist government of China. We regard our 11 joint ventures as 11 keys to success, not just in China, but globally. Our commitment to working in China, with China, for China, remains strong and focused on the future. We love baseball, hot dogs, apple pie, and Chevrolet. Oh. Baseball, hot dogs, apple pie, and Chevrolet. That was in the last century before globalization made democratic capitalism and free trade empty phrases for Americans inclined toward nostalgia. There is no capitalism or free trade, as Americans know it, in a communist dictatorship like China. There's no democracy either. But none of this troubles the leadership of General Motors. They've been courting the Communist Party bosses of Beijing for years. This is a 1999 U.S. Commerce Department report on how communist China has played and manipulated U.S. corporations. It details how the Chinese extort U.S. technology and industrial know-how from our manufacturers with a vague promise of big profits to be made from China's 1.3 billion people. According to the Commerce Department report, GM beat out other prospective foreign partners with a more than $1 billion bid to produce a variation of Buick sedans with the Shanghai Automotive Industry Corporation, SAIC. One of the major factors, if not the main impetus for the subsequent contract award, was GM's willingness to transfer a good deal of state-of-the-art technology. The fact that technology transfer was, indeed, the price extracted from GM for the joint venture contract is confirmed by internal GM documents. That Commerce Department report on GM and China was 13 years ago. We're now building out the Advanced Technology Center, which will bring our research and development uh, that is centered largely in the United States. We're going to diversify that more into China because we think this market is so critically important to the success of our company.
This is a poster for a recent Chinese movie called Birth of a Party or The Great Achievement of Founding the Party. It is a propaganda film celebrating the anniversary of the founding of the Communist Party of China, also known as the CCP. It was sponsored by the Cadillac Division of General Motors. This is the press launch of the film. The production team was arrayed before a massive red banner. On one end of the banner was the communist hammer and sickle. At the other end was the Cadillac coat of arms logo. The Epoch Times, a print and online newspaper of the persecuted Falun Gong Chinese spiritual movement, made an interesting observation about Cadillac's sponsorship of the Chinese Communist Party celebration film. The writer noted there were Cadillacs parked prominently outside the film's premiere and said, My suspicion is that GM in China is marketing this line of luxury vehicles to CCP cadres. These are powerful men with a lot of disposable income, all wrought from taking wealth from the public. The key activities in the lives of many party officials include finding ways to disgorge these funds. Women, gambling, alcohol, and luxury cars are central to the lifestyle. And what if the Cadillac brand wanted to become a mainstream part of this club, the vehicle of choice for the underworld mob that runs China? Well, a good way to start would probably be to publicly sponsor a movie about the great achievements of the founding of the party, wouldn't it? GM is a company well-established for the future in China. And with GM's help, Communist China is now investing in America. The Chinese government is buying our energy resources and key industrial plants. The former General Motors Next Year plant in Saginaw, Michigan, is one of their important acquisitions. The Next Year steering gear plant is the largest employer in Saginaw. Initial media coverage noted the plant was bought by a vague corporation called Pacific Century Motors and an industrial authority of the city of Beijing. The Wall Street Journal called it one of the landmark deals of the era. About six months later, ownership was transferred to AVIC, a communist government industrial corporation. No one noticed or objected that the world's most powerful authoritarian socialist government is now the main employer in a Midwest factory town. All of this happened under the Barack Obama bailout and oversight of GM during its bankruptcy restructuring. Republican presidential candidate Mitt Romney has called the GM bailout crony capitalism. Some believe the charge has merit because union jobs were saved in the deal. But the mega-millionaire should take care when throwing stones in glass houses. Two of Romney's biggest campaign contributors, Wall Street fat cats John Paulson and Paul Singer, walked away with over a billion dollars in profit, a 3,000% profit, by playing the GM bailout and spinoffs and return to the stock market. In other words, Romney's campaign pals made spectacular profits from the Obama GM bailout. See the USA in your Chevrolet. America is asking you to call. Drive your Chevrolet through the USA. America is the greatest land of all. That was then. This is now. We continue to invest heavily in China to ensure our long-term success. Ackerson calls China the crown jewel in the GM universe. U.S. taxpayers might wonder where that leaves the United States of America. I'm Vince Wade.